What you need in the building? How's everybody doing? Marisha Suleiman. WBC, what are you guys doing? Like, y'all just go on belt happy, and y'all just making belts for every single thing. And then when you got too many belts, there's confusion, Mauricio. You know that Floyd Mayweather was talking to you and your organization. He wasn't talking to the WBA. He wasn't talking to the WBO. It's the WBC. You're making this belt thing <laughs> a comedy. What is it? You guys don't have money? What do you need? Donations? What is going on? Y'all making belt after belt after belt. Now we got this Black Lives Matter belt. Frontline belt, you call it. All right? We got this franchise belt. And none of these belts, none of these belts are really important to boxing. They're not. It's boxing. The sport's called boxing, not belt making. Mauricio. Come on, man, Mauricio. Come on, your dad set such a great precedent. The WB had such a reputation. You got to chill out with the belts now, okay? This is what I want to say. The WBC really are going to be the pioneers in wheelchair boxing. I'm looking forward to that. Um, they have some great um, initiatives, great programs. I'm not knocking the WBC, but you guys need to knock it off with the belt thing, okay? You need to take away some of those belts. Black Lives Matter belt, I understand what you're trying to do, make a statement about black lives that they matter, but it just doesn't belong in an exhibition fight unless Roy Jones Jr. and Mike Tyson requested it. They don't belong in there. If it was their idea, then it's a different story, but if it's not their idea, then why on earth are you making a belt for it? Why are you making belts, period, for things that have nothing to do with with the WBC, are you trying to push your name somewhere? Are you trying to push your brand? There's other smarter ways to do so, so that people are interested in the WBC. Um, a lot of the talks that you have are great. I actually watch some of them, okay? Because I am actually, um, I have actually subscribed to your YouTube channel, okay? But as such, you can't be doing that. It makes a mockery of championships, particularly. And fights, it's it looks it looks like you just don't care about fights anymore. Like you're like, oh man. But I know the WBC cares about boxing and the safety of boxers. But some initiatives that you're taking right now are counterproductive to boxing. You're trying to, for example, the franchise belt. Just to say this directly to uh, Mr. Suleiman, the president of the WBC and the WBC itself. Some of the initiatives you're taking, and this is speaking from purely an objective standpoint, are not helping the sport. They're actually hindering the sport. They're hindering certain matchups that we want to see as fans. So, you know, it's just very important, I believe, that you sort of put value on your belts. Otherwise, the WBC is going to be worse than the WBO you know, the IBF still standing up there proud and strong. There's some initiatives they take that's really dumb, but the WBA is not too bad either, even though they have some real corrupt things they've done. But more or less, you now look terrible. Right now, your image is terrible. Your brand is not looking too good. Okay. And I'm hearing all kinds of talks about people forming their own belts and PBC should do its own thing. And, all. and Floyd Mayweather is a supporter of the WBC. He's a supporter of all of the sanctioning bodies. He wants his boxers to, to get those belts and those titles. But what I'm trying to say to you is you're not really making the WBC look good when you do these sort of things. You know, a franchise championship, I guess you guys thought it was a brilliant idea, not realizing it was a redundant idea that are Things are already in place for that. Um, and you have all these weird, like, seasonal belts. The Aztec, the Diamond, you know, the Mayan. I mean, those belts sound cool, but they have no relevance to the situations. <laughs> you know, I understand you're trying to tap into cultural history. I understand you're trying to tap in and say, well, we support the Black Lives Matter movement. We support Black Lives. They do matter. Get what you're trying to do. You're trying to make a conscious uh, social statement. But these things sometimes backfire majorly in light of the fact that especially certain members of the black community in the boxing community look at you and say, why are you bypassing these black fighters if you say their their lives matter? What you did with, for uh, you know, Miss Cruz, 
um, what you did with Jamal Charlo, what you did with uh, 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 Devin Haney. There's a perception out there. I'm just letting you know, I'm giving you feedback. I know the WBC collects their data and then they do it accordingly. But sometimes you do some whack things. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. It just, it just left field. Like we're all about boxing. <laughs> and then you just come with this queer, weird stuff. And I'm like, oh, well, nobody asked for that. Did the fighters ask for that? Nobody asked for that. You know what I mean? Try to have your pulse on the people. Whether it's the Mexican people, whether it's the um, Afro-American people, whether it's the, uh, you know, white community, keep your pulse on the people because you don't seem to have your pulse on them. And pay attention to not just the people, but the fans particularly and what they actually want to see. And the fans will drum up the excitement for you. I'm talking about hardcore fans. If a hardcore fan's excited, everybody's going to be excited because that's something the hardcore fans want to see. Let me tell you something, WBC. I know you want it too, but still. You know what people would love to see Canelo face? It's, it's been something that's been asked for for a very long time, and I know you know this. Canelo versus Demetrius Andrade, Canelo versus Jamal Charlo. Why? Because these guys came up together. And from since super welterweight, um, Canelo has not faced these guys. Okay, And we're talking about super welterweight back in 2000, what was it, 13, somewhere there, seven years ago. That's something the boxing community would kill themselves to see, okay? Those are the kinds of fights we're talking about. Now, Canelo's right now in a community of basically his contemporaries, guys who are his age or a little bit older and or a little bit younger. And that's what the community wants to see. They don't want to see Canelo versus Yildren, which you commissioned for some dumb reason. Not because he's franchise champion, you give him substandard fights. Okay, I still believe that Sergey Kovalev fight was a substandard fight for Canelo. A tougher fight would have been with Demetrius Andrade, who he's talking about he doesn't want to face. Okay? Vasily Lomachenko versus Teofimo Lopez looked like the better fight. But actually, the tougher matchup would have been for Lomo would have been with Devin Haney. <clears throat> so... By you preventing Devin Haney from facing Vasily Lomachenko, you actually missed the best fight. And then on top of that, now you give Teofimo Lopez the franchise championship because Bob Am requested it, something that should never happen. You should not give somebody a championship because they request it. A championship is supposed to be something that's earned, so that's nepotism. But then on top of that, he gets the franchise championship, and now we are robbed of the opportunity with Teofimo Lopez having probably one or two more fights left at the lightweight division. We rob us of the opportunity to see him face Devin Haney, who is the rightful WBC champion. Because Lomachenko vacated his title so he wouldn't have to face Devin Haney. And the fact that he didn't have to face him is the problem. That's what puts a question mark on Lomachenko. We all know he's the, he's the guy, he's the dude of the division. But because he ducked, you, you encouraged him to duck Devin Haney, we couldn't see if Devin Haney would have beaten him. Which, more than likely, from seeing the TV of Lopez beat him, Devin Haney would have. Which means we would have gotten Devin Haney versus TV of Lopez. Which leads us to believe that now Devin Haney, who's supposed to have his shot at being the man of the division, you're depriving him of having that. WBC. That is what you've done by putting this franchise championship out there. You've messed up possible matchups that fans would have gone nuts to watch. And to be honest with you, WBC, and I'm going to talk to you straight. Those are the kinds of matchups we need in boxing. We need 50-50 fights. I have no idea who would win that fight between Teofimo Lopez and Devin Haney. No clue. If Devin Haney would be T, if you know, or David Fio Lopez would be Devin, that's a fight I'd had to sit down and watch. I still can't break it down. I can't tell you who would win. There are too many intangibles. And they're both confident that they can beat each other. So I don't know who would win. That's the kind of fights we want as fans. To sit down and actually watch the fight and see who get the upper hand. Because we don't know. So, and these are two legends in the making we're talking about. I mean, and to have that kind of fight is... So, all I can say to you, WBC, is kind of hold off on the belts for now. Focus on the things that really could be done. Like, I, I, would, I would suggest I'm just a fan. 
But please don't put any more belts out there, okay? Because right now, that belt thing is just is just stabbing people in the wrong place. That's a little feedback from a fan, WBC. We're trying to be nice. We're trying to be supportive. We're trying to support your organization. I try to support you in every single way possible. But right now, you're doing a bunch of crap, okay? And so, this is my address to you. And to clean up your act, all I suggest to you is either you define very strictly what the, the franchise champion is. And when you do so, make sure that it facilitates fights between guys who are WBC regular and franchise. However way it needs to be set up for, to be done. I hope that to you, Fima Lopez, whether you agree to it or not, faces Devin Haney now. If he gets past Gamboa. That's if he gets past Gamboa. He got to get past Gamboa. Okay, and we saw, you know, everybody's talking down Gamboa, but I saw the heart of a lion, the heart of a champion, and still a guy who was trying to win the fight, in spite of the fact that he twisted his ankle in that fight. I think he ripped something in his foot. He still tried to win that fight, even though he didn't have proper balance. And even then, when Tank dropped him in the 12th round, he was willing to get back up and fight, and he had a poker face straight through. <laughs> So, I mean, kudos to Gamble, and we're going to see if Devin Haney can do better with him. That's all I got to say for now. Shout out to the WBC. You guys do a lot of good work. I'm not trying to overshadow all the good work you've done, but you need to clean up your act. You've been doing a bunch of bloopers over the last couple of months or even years, okay? Uh, Franchine Cruz, that woman is representing your organization you didn't listen to her you're trying to back your champion you shouldn't do those things you shouldn't pick sides you should say an investigation is in process and you need to investigate also the wilder versus tyson fury thing you need to do these things you can't be talking about black lives matter and you're not giving the perception to the fan base that you're trying to do something to show that they do matter it's how you behave it's how you act you have to evaluate situations and facts and at least give the appearance of fairness and equity and however it falls, it falls. And you as a sanctioning body needs to do that. You cannot be picking the side of your champions and you're all pro champion because you're getting sanctioning fees from them and they sort of represent what you want. You know, you want to see more representation of, of, of different kinds of people there. You can't be just doing that. You have to be impartial. You have to show your sanctioning body. Otherwise, why would we go? Why would somebody support or be a part of a sanctioning body that's partial and biased? That's not a fair competition. So that's all I'm saying. And of course, if you can, as a sanctioning body, somehow influence uh, the way our fights are judged or suggest certain things concerning how fights are judged. Um, that's also going to go a long way. These are things that I think the WBC, I know you're working on them, but still, these are things the WBC needs to be highlighted for and how they think um, maybe playback cameras can affect the outcome of a fight, maybe changing the angle of view for judges on how they see fights, maybe putting a monitor in there so judges can have extra information so they can go and fact check certain things that happened in a fight, those kinds of things. Because um, in boxing, I think it's the purest sport in the world when two guys go in the ring and face off with each other. Regardless of what the judges think, uh, one fighter can knock out another and that would be the end of that. Or, you know, especially today. You know, it's a much more fairer sport than back in the days. A lot of people don't know that, that, you know, fights, you know, referees used to score fights. Sometimes newspapers used to score fights. Sometimes all kinds of crazy shit used to happen. One guy had the upper hand on him and beat the other guy, but they called it a draw, even though the other guy lost. They don't know about the history of boxing. But we know today boxing is as fair as they come, and it's getting closer to being a sport than just um, violence and, and, and banging out. But in order to make more roads in WBC, you know, like I love your clean boxing program. I love your initiatives in the inner cities. I love your um, motivation to have younger people involved. But one of the things that you're not doing is, especially at this point in time, with all those great initiatives you have, and it could hurt your brand, is those belts. You need to do something about those belts. You have too many belts. You have too many belts for too many different things. And I'm just saying that less sometimes is more. 
And um, your reputation is what will carry you through uh, later on. So try to keep that gold standard that your dad held up. You know, WC had been involved in a number of incidents, corruption, and politics. But barring that, to just try and make those roads forward for boxing to move forward more as a sport and also more as something that can lift people out of their communities, can inspire people. And it's one of the most, I think, most honest sports in the world because if you don't go in there, if you shortchange yourself and you don't go in that ring properly understanding anything can happen, uh, you're likely not just to lose, but you may lose your life in the process. So it's a very honest sport. And um, I really, I just hope that the honor of the sport, the way how the sport really should be conducted uh, will continue onwards. That is my contribution. I'm what you need. You guys have been watching my channel. I have a tremendous afro now. <laughs> you can call me Afro Man. <laughs> but uh, I hope that you guys have a great day. And shout out to Suleiman and the WBC. I wish them well and prosperity in their endeavors.